So here we have a diagram that shows, hopefully pretty clearly, how we're going to wire up the uh, ultrasonic distance sensor. The sensor is a little bit different from the previous one in that it has a little bit of its own onboard control, and it's an active sensor, which means that we have to give it a signal, basically with communicate with the chip, to be able to get back any kind of meaningful data from it. Um, so the way this works, we're going to send a pulse to the ultrasonic sensor. It's going to send that pulse out. And then it's going to read back the uh, the response from the pulse. Basically, it's going to wait and listen. And depending on how long it takes between the pulse and when it returns to the sensor, we can use that delay time to calculate how far away an object is. These work best with uh, large flat objects that are facing the sensor, um, and they have a pretty you know, reasonable range, up down to a few centimeters and up to. Um, one, one and a half, maybe two meters, depending on how big the object is you're looking at. Um, so they're not super sensitive, they're not super reliable, but they work pretty well, and they're kind of interesting things to play with. So here's our sensor from the kit. And we see on the back we have the uh, voltage in, trigger, echo, and ground pins, just as we showed in the diagram. Uh, so I'm going to use the uh, the normal red and black that I use for the voltage in the ground. And then I'm going to use green and yellow and, and orange for the trigger and the echo pins. I'm going to put this a little bit away from the other uh, elements I have in here. Just give me some room to work. And those pins should press fairly cleanly into the uh, breadboard because they all should have all the right spacing. I've got that. Let's go ahead and put the power. Oh, let's unplug this first. And then we'll put our power to the voltage line. And we'll put our ground to our negative line, which again connects to ground. And our voltage is connecting to our 5 volt voltage, 5 volt source on the Arduino. And then I'm going to refer back to my diagram here. So I have the orange line going from the trigger pin to pin 4 on the Arduino. So orange line going from the trigger pin. And it looks like on this one the trigger is on the right and the echo is on the left. Whereas on the diagram here they have trigger on the left and echo on the right. Oh, it's just inverted. So basically I'm looking at the front of it instead of the back of it. Um, so it depends on which side you're, you're oriented on this. So, but I'm still going to connect the trigger pin to the orange line to pin 4. So trigger pin to orange line to pin 4. And then I'm going to connect the echo to the green line to pin 5. So echo to the green line to pin 5 crowded over here. All right. So that should be everything we need to do to wire that up. Pretty straightforward. I have this pin code, uh, which I found inside the Arduino references. So if you look into sensors, examples, ping, that's where I'm getting this from. This is a uh, example which I think is created for a three pin uh, sonar sensor. This is a four pin sensor. Uh, the only difference there is that do you have a separate pin for sending the signal out as for receiving it? So we can modify this pretty easily. And so I'm going to need a pin as an output for the trigger pin and a pin as an input for the echo pin. So I'm going to add those to my global variables. And we're getting to the point where we probably want to, want to label the sections of our variables. So this is our pins for the ultrasonic sensor. So I have my trigger pin. Which I've connected to 4. And I have my echo pin, which is on 5.
I want my trigger pin to be an output and my echo pin to be an input. So I'm actually going to copy these guys here. And then just change the LED pin to trigger pin and my echo pin here. So I have trigger pin as an output and echo pin as an input. Then I'm going to use the basic logic from here to actually get the duration of the pulse. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over to my code. I'm going to paste it in. Again, I'm going to use control C to copy and control V to paste. Now I got to use the names that I'm using here. So I actually have the output already set, so I don't need that one. I'm using my trigger pin to generate the pulse. And again here, this is going low for two microseconds, high for five microseconds, and then low for, um, for until it goes back to the beginning again. Since we have other things inside this code, we probably don't need to do the low because we're going to be doing other things. It's going to take some time. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have it in there. It doesn't delay significantly the code, so we can probably just leave it. And then we already have a input for our other one. This is using the same pin for the pin. So I'm just going to take this off because it's not true. So use echo pin to measure pulse. So I'm going to say the duration. I actually don't have duration defined inside this code. Um, but since I'm not using it anywhere else yet, I'm going to go ahead and initialize it right here. So I'm going to say int duration. Uh, I don't know what they're using in here for the duration. They're using a long, uh, which is basically a integer that has a longer or a greater length uh, that it can have as far as the maximum value. I don't think we're going to have an issue with this being too long, um, but we can use a long just to be consistent if we want with the other code. So long duration pulse pin. We want to get our echo pin here. So let's get our echo pin. And so we're looking for when the echo goes high. We're going to get a value here. Now they also have a sub function here to convert into inches or to convert into centimeters. Um, but that function is only dividing the duration in microseconds by uh, 29 and 2 or 74 and 2, basically converting the speed of sound. Um, I think having a whole separate function to do one mathematical operation is probably not super helpful. Um, so what I want to do is I'm just going to calculate distance in centimeters. So let's just do float. We're going to call this distance. I'm going to do duration. And I want to do the same years conversion, so I'm going to copy this part. Divided by. I'm also going to put 0, 0.0 at the end of these. The reason I'm doing 0, 0.0 at the end of each of them is I want it to treat these as decimal values or floating point integers, which allow for decimals. Uh, if I don't put the decimals there, then my distance is always going to be a whole number value. And so I may have rounding errors. And um, I don't want that. I want it to be a, an actual whole number. So that, and then I'm going to display out the value. So I'm going to use my serial print line command, just like last time. And we'll say that the distance of count was make this our distance in centimeters. And we can leave the rest of that there in case we still want to do our counts and stuff like that. All right, let's upload this and see if it works. So I'm going to minimize that portion so we can see our circuit. Plug it in and upload the code. I'm trying to use my uh, paper from our photoresistor to the measurements there. 
you see you have a distance here. I get closer, I get smaller. For the way it gets bigger. Move it out of the way, it's going to my monitor at this point. And you see there's some throw offs there. If I tilt the paper, if I don't hold it perfect, it doesn't always track it. Um, kind of the bigger the object you have, the easier job you'll have of uh, tracking this reliably. So here I have a coaster, a little bit bigger. Get a little bit more reliable of a signal off of that. So, pretty straightforward. Hope you guys like that circuit, and we'll see you for the next one.